Hey everyone, this is quite an urgent episode that I'm pushing out. I'm going to talk about what happened with my Ether wallet yesterday in relation to the DNS level hack. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how this hack plays out. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about whether it's safe or not to use my Ether wallet and some tips on how you can protect yourself. There's also a plethora of information available. I'll leave the links down below. Make sure you do read up on all the material available. And if you're in doubt, make sure you do consider so a professional about this. So let's start off with what happened with this whole incident yesterday. So my Ether wallet itself was not hacked. They were kept pretty clean in this whole situation. Ironically, it's the internet backbone, the domain name system that was actually breached. And before we go further, I'm going to say a few things. First of all, funds are not stored on my Ether wallet. So if you haven't logged in in my Ether wallet during this past few days, then check your account and it's most likely that you're not affected by this. This is because your funds are not stored on my Ether wallet, rather they're stored on the Ethereum blockchain. So as long as you hold and keep your private key safe, then nothing, no hacker can really breach that. So that's just one thing to clarify before we all move on forward and before panic starts to set in, that it only affects people who have used this recently. Now, if you have used my Ether wallet within the past 12 hours, especially during a time when the domain this, um, name system was hijacked, then then there's a few things. If you were using a hardware wallet, the most a hacker can do is reroute the funds. That means the hacker can change where the fund is sent to. So make sure you can just double check if you have this ledger or Trezor or any sort of hardware wallet. Just make sure that the funds are being sent to the right place and then you're good. And you can also do this without my Ether wallet. If you're just looking at your balance, if you're just looking at it and you don't want to make any transfer transactions, just use Ether Scan or Ether Explorer or any think that can browse the Ethereum blockchain. Your funds are actually stored on the Ethereum blockchain, not my Ether wallet. So you can absolutely see what's kind of happening there. Now, if you are using, not using a hardware wallet, that's when things get a little bit more complicated. And this is where I need to start explaining what exactly happened. So what happened then? So my Ether wallet, the service itself is actually safe. So in terms of going to the official my Ether wallet website, well, that is okay. Let me just load that up here, my Ether wallet. So if you load up my Ether wallet, and then if you click on your browser and there's a little blue a green button, I don't know why I can't show you this, but um, you wanna check up on your browser that there's a little lock button and a green My Ether Wallet Incorporated US tag on it to say, you know what, this website is signed, it's certified, and it's coming from the right source. In terms of what's gonna happen if you go to an incorrect website, there will be a certificate error. So it'll pop up and say, you know what, there's gonna be a certificate error. Obviously on here, the problem is fixed already, so it doesn't show up. But if it was a fake website, there will be a secure um, uh, certificate error and you have to like click ignore to actually fall into the trap, okay? So don't ignore any certificate errors. If there's ever a certificate error, if there's any doubt in this, well, just back out and move away. So here in this situation, if yesterday you browsed this website and then you saw there was a certificate error, here's what's happened. So what has happened and what was happening was that um, the internet works by something called a domain name system. It's basically like a big phone book. So when you ask and when you want to ask your browser to go to myetherwallet.com, it queries this domain, this big phone book and says, okay, yeah, this is where you want to go. This is the location, this is the IP address of where you want to go. But the hackers managed to compromise the Google domain name system, which means that they compromised the phone book itself and they redirected you to an incorrect address. So it's like, yeah, let's go ask Google where's, you know, my Ether wallet. And then the phone book being compromised sends you to a sketchy neighborhood, to a fake version of this. And this is where the hackers can play some malicious code and then they can start stealing your private key. Well, let's see what happens. So if you're logging in using your key store JSON file or your private key in these two situations and you are on the wrong website, if you're redirected to the malicious website, then the hacker has your private key. So what happens is that usually on my Ether wallet, it never ever uploads your private key. But if you did 
on a fake website because browsers can send that private key over the internet to the hacker. And it's not a big file, right? A private key is just a string of letters and numbers. It's, it's really easy for that to be sent over to the hacker. So if that is the case, then the hacker might have had your private key. If you are browsing a fake version of my Ether wallet, if you ignore that problem with the security, the certificate, and you uploaded your private key using the private key or the Keystone JSON file or the mnemonic phrase, these are the insecure, insecure ways of using my Ether wallet, then it's likely that you, the hacker has your private key. Now, what is happening with the private key? Well, the private key gives you full access, gives anyone full access to that account, which means that they don't even have to send funds at this date. They can use it at any time because they have full access to your account. So if this is the case, and if I was a victim of this, I will definitely send my funds out to a ledger, to a private key that I control. So something like a ledger or somewhere that is safe, because if the hacker, the hacker can just wait and do it at any moment in the future. So if you have your pri if you if you do feel like you're compromised, do look at a tutorial on how to fix it. Because honestly, you want to you want to send those funds to a safe place that you control and make sure that everything is backed up. If you're using a hardware wallet like a Ledger or a Trezor, the beauty of it is that the private key, your credentials never really leave the device. So what you're really doing is that my Ether wallet, they give you something, a document, a form to fill in basically, and then you sign it on the device and you pass back that form. So instead of giving all your credentials, it's like, it's like if the postman comes to collect the mail, do you give them a signed document of what funds to send? Or do you give them your passport, your ID, and your social security card directly to the postman? You'll never give that ID to the postman. So this is a situation where the ledger prevents that private key from ever being sent and leaving the device is always kept home. And that's why the only thing that a hacker can do if you ever do use a hacked My Ether Wallet website is that they can reroute that information. So if you're sending a fund, they can give you a form that's been hijacked and has the wrong address on. So in that case, your device, if you still have a screen, you'll see that, oh, the device, the address is wrong. So that's why you want to double check every time you send on a ledger, just in case there was ever a malicious bit of code that changed the address from the one you entered in. There's more information on Reddit on what to do in this situation, and there's written documents about this. So this is, if you were affected by this whole situation, do check it up. But that is only if you access my Ether wallet during the time of the DNS breach. Well, let's talk about the future as well, because something like this isn't uncommon. So it seems like there are articles written about the BGP pack and how they really rerouted the traffic. And it just goes to show how really broken the internet is. You know, when the internet was really invented, they never really envisioned the future of how it is being done right now. And ironically, it's a little bit too late to change everything. So the fact that we have these giant phone books and the fact that we have individual phone books for different ISP providers. So it depends on your telecom company and depends on where you live in the world that you have a different phone book too. So this is why even if you live in another part of the world, it's still possible to have DNS poisoning and for that phone book to be compromised at a local level. So in terms of what you want to do in the future is one security tip is definitely to make sure that you're using the HTTPS version of my Ether wallet. You want to be using um, and making sure that the certificate is signed. So every time you just check up on the browser address. Also, if you're just browsing your account to see how much balance it has and you don't want to send any transactions, don't log in with my Ether wallet. That's not smart. You can just log on, um, you just scan the address with Ether scan, and then it'll show you all the transactions on there and the current balance. And that's the best practice way of doing it because if you're just using Ether scan, you're not giving any private key information over there. So I'd love to hear what you guys other security tips that you use for this situation. I saw one question and answer that was quite important as well. It's like, oh, why don't we just bypass this whole domain name system thing? Why don't we just don't use a phone book if this phone book can be compromised and just directly go to the IP? The issue with that is that sometimes even that routing can fail. And also if you do so, you're not going to be on a secure data server as well. So you're not going to be using HTTPS protocol. So there's also other ways to breach that as well. So honestly, at that point, you really want to figure out a way how to use the offline version of my Ether wallet, which I'll do a tutorial for you guys in the future as well. 
this incident has shown really two things, that we really need anti-hacker protection in this space. There is a lot of malicious hackers just wanting to breach cryptocurrency accounts. The fact that cryptocurrency is stored on the blockchain and the fact that if we get our private key compromised, they can send any funds without a reverse option. That really gives incentive for hackers to really hack. And the fact that it's so valuable right now just gives them even more incentive. So that's number one. We really need some anti-hacking protection. So I made a video about hacking and the anti-hacking services that they provided. So I'll put a link on the video in the end. And also another thing is that blockchain is providing a trust layer for the internet. The fact is that the internet when it was built is quite broken and the blockchain is really providing a layer, layer of trust because we have a decentralized source of trust of trusted entities. So that's a kind of a cool way to think about it, that blockchain itself is gonna fix a lot of these key problems that are present in the internet infrastructure. So I'll talk about that in the future and these possible applications and ways to really fix how broken our internet is. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Remember to click the little subscribe button to subscribe for more videos and I'll keep you guys updated on when crazy things like this happen and check out the little notification bell as well to be notified of when videos are released. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you next time.